Welcome to Red Cliff Plantation State Historic Site. I'm Ranger Chelsea, and this year marks the 150th anniversary of the creation of Aiken County in South Carolina, formed in 1871. Red Cliff Plantation, as well as some of the other lands formerly owned by James Henry Hammond, currently lies in Aiken County. When James Henry Hammond purchased this land from the Galfins in 1855, which would have been formerly occupied by the Westo tribe, these 400 acres were located within Edgefield County. His first plantation, Silver Bluff, was further south and originally in Barnwell County. In recognition of the creation of Aiken County, we want to share with you some of what would have been happening in and around 1871 here at Redcliffe. After James Henry Hammond's death in 1864, Catherine and James Hammond's eldest son, Harry, and his wife, Emily, take over the estate. This is the second generation of the Hammond family to live here, and they were the owners in 1871 when Aiken County was formed. Here we have a document written by Harry Hammond from 1870. A note was written in a scrapbook where this document was kept by Harry's grandson, John Shaw Billings, and he says, Harry Hammond was addicted to statistics. Here, he tries to figure out the value of Redcliffe on the basis of the livelihood it supplies its occupants, considered as a 5% investment on capital. We see here that Harry valued Redcliffe at $15,000 in 1870. A celebratory event for the family that occurred in the following year, December of 1871, was when Elizabeth, or Betty, Hammond, James and Catherine Hammond's youngest daughter, married William Ryford Eve. They went on to have 12 children. Betty was often written of fondly within James Henry Hammond's personal accounts, where he would remark, Betty, our youngest, is still the brightest creature in the world. Nothing passing escapes her, yet she is gentleness itself when by herself, loyal, loving, and pure. This is a copy of Betty and William's marriage certificate. They were married at St. Paul's Church in Augusta, Georgia, just across the Savannah River. The original structure from the time of their wedding is no longer there, as it was destroyed in the Great Fire of 1916. Another joyful event for the Hammond family at Redcliffe in 1870 the year before Aiken County was created, was the birth of the owners Harry and Emily Hammond's fourth child, Christopher Cashel Fitzsimmons, also referred to as Kit. Three years later, their last child, Alfred, or Alf, was born in 1873. Alf and Kit ended up spending much of their young adulthood living and working at the family-owned cottonseed oil mill at Cathwood Plantation. In addition to the Hammond family, Redcliffe was the home of enslaved families, their descendants, and additional black working families over the years. The Henleys lived at Redcliffe longer than any other family and were originally forced to work for the Hammonds as enslaved laborers. Here, we have copies of Lucy and Anthony Henley's receipts of purchase from the 1830s and 40s. After emancipation and right around the creation of Aiken County, we have documents illustrating Henley children, as well as other black children descended from or born into slavery, gaining an education, something that was illegal just a few years earlier. Despite finally having access to an education, 
it's important to remember that schooling was vastly different for black students than it was for white students. On this list of pupils, we see two children from the Henley family, formerly born into slavery, Emma and Victorine. The Henleys remain a part of Redcliffe's history throughout the 20th century, and pictured here are Lucy, Kizzy, and James Henley in 1951, who were all living and working at Redcliffe. The Wigfall family was another family formerly enslaved at Redcliffe and they continued to work as paid staff here after emancipation. In Harry Hammond's notes from the 1870s, he created this diagram of the back workyard at Redcliffe. And we see here that Sally Wigfall, whom we believe to be pictured next, lived in one of the cabins that was later converted to a garage and still stands today. One of the Wigfall children, Dennis, born into slavery in 1861 at Redcliffe, by 1880 had moved to Augusta as his work abilities were limited in South Carolina due to the Black Codes, which restricted what work Black people could do without a paid permit. At the time of the 1880 Augusta, Georgia census, Dennis is noted as a loafer with no occupation. Shortly after, records show he becomes a porter before eventually opening his own business, the successful Wigfall and Company grocery chain in Augusta. This grocery business was extremely successful, and Dennis's son Clarence took over after his father's death. Despite the Wigfall family being born into slavery and the continued limitations from the Black Codes of South Carolina and segregation throughout the South, this family's success speaks of their strength and resilience. Last, let's take a look at one of the beautiful pieces in our collection created right around 1871 when Aiken became a county. Pictured here is a Renaissance Revival walnut sideboard made by the Herder brothers, who were famous furniture makers of the late 19th century. Their clients included the Vanderbilts, President Ulysses S. Grant, J.P. Morgan, and other wealthy individuals in the United States. They were also known for their interior design work in the White House's state dining room, renovated during the presidency of Theodore Roosevelt, as well as additional furniture pieces they designed for the White House during Grant's presidency. According to the last owner of Redcliffe, John Shaw Billings, his grandfather Harry Hammond used some of the inheritance his wife Emily Cumming Hammond gained from the passing of her aunt in the 1890s to purchase this sideboard. Thanks for joining us as we took a special look at Redcliffe's history during the creation of Aiken County in 1871. For more information and programs on the history of Aiken County, go to aikencounty150.org. <laughs>